In this video, I'm going to cover virtual sound check, specifically for the Allen and Heath SQ series, but a lot of this stuff carries over to other versions or brands. Virtual sound check is really useful for training in general uh, because it allows you to um, play back specific tracks or all of them and make a mix without having to have a band on stage. Now, this is beneficial for a couple of reasons. One, you don't have to spend time uh, getting like, oh, no, start over, do this again. Can I hear this specifically? You're going to lose friends very quickly if you try to do that with a band. So you record all of the individual tracks and then play them back through each channel, and then you can mix the whole thing and, and work on making your whole mix. Or you can zone in and uh, specifically do one track or work on a vocal and hear what different compression settings do, different EQ settings do, uh, how the effects work and how much you want to use and the different settings you can do in the effects units. So without further ado, let's jump over to the board and uh, we'll go through the settings that uh, we need to do to get the setup and then how to run it. All right, now that we're back at the mixer, I'm going to go through all the different things we need to set up to do a virtual sound check and how to do the playback and that type of thing. So let's just dive right in. I've got a camera angle here to give you a close up of the screen so you can see all the stuff that's being pressed. The first thing we need to check when setting up for virtual sound check is where we're pulling our USB information from. So if I go into setup, make sure we're in audio and go over to USB. You can see we have two modes, or we have a mode here and a sample rate. So the mode has two options. You have USB B or SQ drive. So USB B is a USB port on the back of the mixer, and SQ drive is a USB A port on the top of the mixer. In this case, we're going to use SQ drive so that we can do the tracks off of a USB drive instead of using a computer. The USB sample rate allows us to choose between 96 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz. If you choose 48 kilohertz on the SQ drive, then you can record 32 channels at once. If you go to 96, that'll cut, cut in half and you'll only be able to do 16. So once we've selected this, I want 32 tracks and I want to use SQ drive. So we've got that set. The next thing is to put our drive in. And when you put it in for the first time, it'll say it needs to be formatted. This one already has been. Uh, once you hit format, it's going to delete everything that's on the drive and replace it with some folders. You can then add other things to that drive later, but the first time you do this, when it gets formatted, it's going to erase everything. Once you have that set up, you can go down to SQ drive and then choose between stereo or multitrack. Stereo is just going to be your basic left-right uh, mix. So you're just going to record the two channels and you get a single stereo audio file at the end. It's a great way just to do a main recording. If you want to do multi-track for virtual sound check, then you just select over here. And you can see we've got our 32 channels set up. Now for the drives, my normal drive is this little thumb drive and I just use it to record a stereo uh, recording. But I generally find with these little thumb drives, they can't keep up when you're doing a multi-track and you get lots of errors. So, I have a portable hard drive that I plug in. This one's a spinning disk, but you can actually get a, it's much better to go with some sort of SSD drive. And if you search on Google for the SQ community, or Allen and Heath community um, message boards, there's a, a pinned thing in there about compatibility with different drives and how well they work. So, once this is done reading, there we go, it's figured it out. If I go in here, uh, it's got a multi-track file already saved. That's because I did a recording with it. So, to set this up, we've got our SQ drive, is set, or have the USB mode set to SQ drive. We have the sample rate set to 48 kilohertz. It's been formatted. The next thing to do is input patch, or output patch. So we need to patch our channels to our SQ drive. So uh, an easy way to do this is just go outputs, 
IP direct outputs and then it'll just copy your channel from the board to that number on the uh, SQ drive. So you can see here I start at number three because number one and two, if you switch to the stereo one, it'll always pull from number one and two. So I have that set as a main left right and then my individual channels start at three. If you don't, if you're not worried about having a left right recording, then you can just start everything at one. So you can see here number three is kick in and if I go back over to the SQ drive, you can see that number three is kick in. <clears throat> and that follows across for the rest of them. All right, so for our IO, we've selected all of this. If you use the IP direct outputs option, the one thing to check for is if you go over to routing and select a channel, it'll give you the global direct out settings. So this will affect all of your out direct out channels, but this is where you'd have to choose where it's pulling from. So if you want to do a virtual sound check recording, your best bet is to actually pull it post preamp because that'll skip all of the uh, processing that you put on the channel. Normally it's set to like post delay, in which case everything you do to the channel would also be in that recording. So if you use the direct out, make sure you switch this to post preamp. Another way to do this, if you don't want to, if you don't want to mess with your direct output settings, is you can go to tie lines, and this will just directly connect your preamp to the USB one. So you would select where you want to pull from. So in my case, I use a Dante card. So we would take IO port one and then where I want it to go. So I want it to go to the USB recorder. So we go IO port one, input one, IO port two, input two, and that'll do the same thing. Uh, if you have some stuff that's on like S-Link or IO port and then some other stuff that's local, you can also just jump to that. This will just connect those things directly to USB with no processing whatsoever. All right, once we have our patching done, when you go back to your multi-track recorder in the SQ drive, you should see all the names of the channels. And in this case, like this is the microphone I'm using right now, you should be able to see some signal on them as well. When you're ready to record, hit the record button. It's now armed. Then you're gonna hit the play button and that'll start the recording. And then when you're done, you hit stop. So we've now made our recording. We want to play that back through the channels to do virtual sound check. If I select this, it's gonna load in all of the files. But when I hit play, it's going to start playing the track, but nothing's gonna be coming through here because we actually have to patch the channels to pull from our USB drive as opposed to from the actual inputs that they normally run. So here it is, if I hit play, I'll just jump ahead. So you can see I've got some signal stuff going there, but we're not actually patched anything. That's why everything disappears. So if we go back to IO, now we're patching inputs. We're patching what is coming into these channels. So we've got our input channel selected, there's all the names of our channels, and then you would select coming from USB as opposed to local or IO or S-Link, you would choose USB. And remember I said my kick-in is number three. So if I patch that, go back here, then number three would be kick-in. A fast way to do this is the first time you do it is save it as a scene. So if I go over to my scenes here, I have two uh, scenes saved that are useful for this. So I have normal patch. So if I load this and go back to my kick in, you can see that it's now patched back to the IO port instead of being patched to USB. But if I go to V sound patch or virtual sound patch, I hit go. And then go back there, you can see they're all patched to a different USB uh, input. So to set that up, we go into scenes um, after you've patched it. So if I go to input USB, you can see they're all been patched to USB. Save that as a scene and then 
turn on recall filter. So select the scene that you want to do, go recall filter, and then you block literally everything except for input, patch, and preamp. When you do this, nothing about your previous mix will change. All that it will pull is the new patching. Um, when, and so I have, I've done that for both of these. So this pulls the USB patching and then this puts it back to the normal patching. So just to double check that one, you see it's all USB. And if I, even if, let's turn this off. And then we go scenes, normal patch, go. I jump back here, you can see my EQ is still off. Uh, but now we've been patched back to my I.O. port. So hopefully you found that useful and I covered all the thing, any questions you might have about virtual sound check and how to set that up with the SQ. Uh, for us specifically here, just remember if you want to practice, just plug in that larger drive and hit virtual sound check patch and that'll allow you to play back those tracks and practice on all the different channels. So. Please check out some of the other videos on my channel uh, if, if you found this helpful. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks.